Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a quilt called All Stars. This is a jelly roll pattern from Cozy Quilt Designs, and I've picked out a nice jelly roll that's all cut from different shades of grunge. So these are all green shades. The only other thing we need to get started is a background, and I've picked another grunge here. You can see the grunge has just a little bit of color in the background, and that should make a nice foil for all these colors. The pattern comes with instructions for three different sizes. I'm gonna make the throw size. So I need 23 strips, two and an eighth yards of background, five eighths for the inner border, and that's the same fabric as the background. And then all I need is one and a third yards for that last outside border. The next step is to pick out the strips we're going to use. I think they would all look good against the background, but we've got duplicates on a lot of these colors, so I think what I'll simply do is pull off the duplicates and then we'll have at least one of every other color. Here's a nice blend of colors. The cutting is very easy. All of these are going to get cut exactly the same way. I can't give you the sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns are always very, very easy to follow. The cutting is all done, and the first step is to take the smaller background pieces, and we need to mark them. So I'm going to put this on my cutting board on a place where I've got a 45 degree line, where that's coming right to the corner there. And I want to mark, and I want to mark on the back side of mine, I'm going to mark a line right on that diagonal. So I'm going from the corner right like this and every one gets marked exactly the same way. I'm at the sewing machine with my jelly roll pieces and my marked backgrounds and this is how it fits on. We're going to match up the two outer edges there and this line right here will be coming right to the corner there and we're going to stitch right along the sewn line or maybe a little bit to the outside of the sewn line. And when we open this up, it should make one long strip. Here's a tip you might like to try. Instead of drawing on the back of all the background squares, you can draw a line on your sewing machine, or you can use tape like this that has lines on it. And that red line is going to be pointing towards the needle hole and just coming straight down. And I'm just eyeing it up and I'll just cut off the excess there. Now, I can take a jelly roll piece and a background, line up the edges just like I did before, but I can sew along the diagonal there. So I'm putting the tip of the piece at the needle. The bottom corner here, I'm just gonna swivel till it's on that red line. And I'm just flipping this up so I can see where I'm going. And I just keep it on the red line the whole way. And now I've got a nice straight piece, but with a lot less work. Once they're all stitched, we want to iron them so that all of that extra stuff is going towards the dark color. So I'm just going to peel it open there and then add a little steam. Last step is to trim off the excess back here. So you can just open it up. You can use your blade if you like. I find it easiest just to grab a pair of scissors and trim it down so we've got a quarter inch seam allowance left. I'm heading back to the machine and I've got the pieces we just sewed and the background. And this is everything. This is the whole quilt. All we have to do is take one background and two of these strip pieces and it doesn't matter which colors they are, just pick two different colors. And that is how they go on the block. So I'm going to stitch this one on first.
and the seam allowance will go toward the middle. And that's the way it wants to go because we've got a seam allowance coming in here. And then this guy will turn it around and the seam allowances here also go toward the middle. And now we've got a nice square block and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the rest of these pieces up into blocks just like this. The blocks are all done and we're already ready to lay it out. These are very, very fast to make. The layout is pretty easy. We're gonna get four, and I'm gonna use four different colors here. And those four come together to make a star and then we're just going to repeat. And we're starting to see, as I go up, not only do I have these stars here, there's another star forming right there. That's the entire quilt laid out, and it's pretty easy if you don't like the colors you have together, you can always turn the block upside down to get a better blend. The other thing you could do is you could specifically take four of the same color, like these four here, and you could make some of the stars all one color. So you could do some one color stars interspersed. You might even be able to do the whole quilt with all the same color stars. I'm not sure about that because I don't know if it would exactly line up that way, but you certainly could pick out some prominent colors and put them three or four places in the top. There's no special matching to sew the top together. None of these seams line up. We don't have to match anything, so I'm just going to make rows and sew the rows together, then put the small border on, the big outside border on, get it loaded onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded up and we get to pick a thread color now. There's a lot of neutral shades that will work on here and I don't mind if the thread shows a little bit in the background because the pattern is very vibrant. These stars really pop so we could go with a color in the background without it taking away from the patchwork. There's that gray green. This is a nice neutral. I kind of like that. It's a little bit light, but I think over on the border here, I think that'll show a little bit. That will look good. Gold is one option. The greens in this whole jelly roll, they're very yellowish. So that's pretty light on the background. It'll show a little bit there. Got another gray green here. shows a little bit. Now this is a, I don't even know what color this is, almost a taupe color. It's very gray. That one shows a little there, doesn't show much in the border, and I do want it to show in the border. And of course we could go with a nice deep forest green. Now that's going to show the most. I think that's going to be too prominent. I really think that the gold is going to look the best. One thing I don't mention very often is the color of thread I'm using and how it's going to show on the back of the quilt. The back of this one is exactly the same as this outside border. And so I often am thinking of what color thread I'm gonna use on the top and how it will look on the back. I usually want the thread to show on the back a little bit. And this one will, so that was a consideration. I don't like to use different color threads on the top and the bottom because my machine is a little bit picky and if your tension isn't perfect, you can get some of the back thread showing or some of the top thread showing on the back. And I don't want either of those happening. So I will either use the same color or colors that are very, very close. I really struggled to find a quilting pattern that would look good. I decided upon Vicky's feather, but here are some of the other options I was looking at. I thought this quilt would look good with leaves. So, that would look really nice. I just thought it might make it look like a fall quilt and it's not only a fall quilt. That one's very interesting. Let me make it a little bit smaller so you can see it. Those are ginkgo leaves. Again, that looks like it would look great on the quilt. It has kind of a spa feel to it. But I think the Simple Meander won't fight with any of the patchwork and will be the best option.
the All Stars quilt is all done. And I do like that you can see those stars all so very clearly. Most of the stars have four different colors in them, but I did make three stars, this dark green, a light green, and a gold up there, where all four of the pieces are the same color. So mine are just sprinkled throughout, but you certainly could make more of those if you like. I wasn't sure about the quilting pattern when I started it, the size of it. I thought it might look a little bit too big, but now that it's done, I really like that scale. So the scale of your quilting, how dense it is or how far apart it is, totally a matter of personal preference. I tend to like things very small as a rule, but this looks really good, nice and curvy. The backing, it's that same color grunge that's on the border, and it almost looks like denim or velvet because the, um, the little color change you've got in there really makes it very interesting. For the binding, I just took the extra jelly roll strips. I cut each jelly roll strip in half and I sewed it into one long piece and put that all the way around the edge so I didn't have to buy an extra fabric for the binding. It's 64 by 76, so it's a generous throw size. And the pattern does come with two other sizes in addition to this one. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions about how to make the quilt, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. Now at the end of every video, we like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a quilt called Crescendo. We showed you how to make this a couple of months ago, but today you can win it. This is all done with Hoffman Batiks. It's got a nice watery quilting pattern on it and it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway and then enter your name and your email address and you might be the lucky winner. Now if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting!